These are the video instructions for the Logic Gate soldering kit. For this project, you will need tweezers, flux, solder, and a soldering iron. It is also helpful to have a bent conical and bevel tip for soldering. In our kit, we have our Logic Gate PCB, batteries, battery cases, USB cable, legs and screws, switches, and lastly, our component bag. Let's take a quick look at our components. These are our resistors. They are identifiable by their rectangular bodies and the center numbers. The number in the centers of the chip are the code for its resistance in ohms. These are our diodes. Diodes can be identified by the thin metal tabs sticking out of each side. They can also be identified by the polarity stripes marking the negative lead. This is our LED. We can identify these because they have small notches in their leads and polarity markings on the bottom of the component. The polarity markings will almost always be some form of triangle shape. The tip of the triangle indicates the negative lead, and the flat bottom of the triangle indicates the positive lead. And lastly, this is our mini USB. Let's begin. Start by wiping the board clean. Use 91% isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth. Put your bent conical tip on your iron and turn on your soldering station. I like my station at about 550 degrees Fahrenheit for this type of surface mount work. Next, grab your preferred solder. For these surface mount components, I like 0.3 millimeter diameter solder. This smaller solder diameter allows for fine control over the amount we use. But if you don't have that, 0.6 millimeters is fine. We're gonna start on the back of the board with the resistors. On the back, we have several footprints. These rectangular footprints labeled R1 through R10 are our resistors. Our component bag has a strip of nine resistors and a single 10th resistor of a different value. Grab the single value resistor and we'll start prepping pad R10. Start by putting a small amount of flux on each exposed copper pad. The flux will enable the solder to flow better and help prevent oxidation of the solder joint. Now that R10's pads are fluxed, let's add some solder to the right hand pad. To do this, touch your iron to the soldering pad and then feed in a very small amount of solder. Next, let's place our resistor on R10. It doesn't matter which orientation you place this as resistors are non-polarized. Use your tweezers to hold the component in place and reflow our pre-soldered pad. Now our component is tacked into place, but it's still not perfectly straight. Push down on the component with your tweezers and reflow the pad one more time. This will ensure that the component is pushed down to the board and has a good solid connection. Now we need to rotate our board and solder the other side of our component. Simply place the iron tip on the component pad and component lead and then feed in a small amount of solder. Follow this same method for resistors R1 through R9 and then we'll move on to the diodes. After you finish your resistors, inspect the board to make sure that you didn't miss any. Also make sure that the components are pushed down flat against the PCB and that your solder joints look solid. Our diode footprints are labeled D1 through D4. On the diode footprint, you will see a plus sign on the left-hand side and a minus sign on the right. On your diode, you will see a gray stripe. The gray stripe indicates the negative side. So place your diode so the gray stripes are aligned with the right negative side of the board. For our diodes, follow the same soldering method as we did for the resistors. Flux the pad, add some solder to the right-hand side of the pad, and then solder both sides of the component. When finished, inspect the diodes to make sure that they have strong solder joints and are laying flat against the PCB. Next up is our LEDs. Remember that LEDs are polarized and have a positive and negative lead. On the front of our board, there are small rectangular footprints. These are our LED footprints. The left side of the footprint is the positive side and the right side of the footprint is our negative side. Be sure when placing the LEDs, to place them so that the left side is positive and the right side is negative. For soldering the LEDs, we're gonna follow the same method used before. Add flux to each of the component pads, then add a little bit of solder to the right-hand side of the pad. Then, carefully solder your component in place. Carefully solder all of your LEDs, and then we'll move on to our final surface mount component. Now for the most challenging part of the project, the USB port. On the bottom of the USB, there are two small plastic bumps. Use your fingernail to scrape these off. We want the bottom flat. 
Next, make sure the connection pins for your USB are straight. Inspect them, and if any are bent, use a pair of tweezers to gently bend them back in place. To prepare our USB for soldering, we're going to add flux to every pad. Next, place your USB on the pad. The most important thing is to make sure that the legs are straight and lined up with the component footprint. Before soldering, I recommend turning up the temperature of your soldering iron. I turned mine as high as 620 degrees to make sure that I could heat the component and pad and flow solder properly. When your component is straight, add extra solder to your iron tip. Then hold the component in place with your tweezers. Touch the iron to the component and mounting pad. This should get enough solder on the mounting leg to hold the component in place while we solder the other mounting pads. Go ahead and solder all of the USB mounts. Now that our USB mounts are soldered, we just need to solder the pins. The only pins that need to be soldered are the two outside pins. Before you start to solder the pins, I highly recommend switching to a small bevel tip if you have it. This makes drag soldering down the pins a little bit easier in my opinion. However, I suggest you use the iron tip that you're most comfortable with. To solder the USB pins, take your iron tip and push down firmly on the pin you wish to solder. Feed in a small amount of solder and allow the component to heat up. Then drag the iron tip down towards the pin and away from the USB. Do this for both outside pins that need soldering. If there's a small bridge between pins caused by excess solder, that's okay as long as pins one and five from the far ends do not have a short or bridge across the entirety of the component. Now it's time to solder our through hole components. Switch your iron tip back to your favorite tip style for through hole components. In our bag of switches, we have two types of switches. We have our vertical slide switches and our angled slide switches. For the front of the board, we want to use our vertical slide switches. Grab your switches and place them on the front of the board. Hold the switch in place and flip your board over, using the weight of the board to keep the switch straight. Do your best to solder the switches straight and make sure there are no unwanted shorts. After soldering our vertical switches in place, it's time to solder our angled slide switch. Flip the board over to the back and you will see a switch footprint. Place the vertical slide switch so that the knob is hanging off the edge of the PCB. It should be barely visible from the front. Hold the switch in place with your finger and flip the board upside down. Then solder the switch into place. Lastly is our battery cases. On the back of the PCB, there are two pins labeled VCC and ground. Insert the battery case so that the rectangular extrusion is going into VCC and the center of the battery case pin is going into ground. Insert both battery cases and then flip your board over and let's solder our final components. Solder in the battery cases and then pop in the battery. For putting in the battery, it helps to use a pair of tweezers to pull back the battery holder. Once your batteries are installed, flip the board over and test each of the switches. If all of the switches and lights are working as intended, congratulations, you have a working USB logic gate. If they are not working as intended, please inspect the resistors and the LED solder joints. Make sure there are no cold joints and that each part of the component is making good connections with the pad. Lastly, when you're finished inspecting your board, rub off the excess flux with a microfiber cloth. 